Hello, I'm Minister Detina Hurd. I'm an associate pastor at Solid Foundation Church of God, located at 4201 Bank Street in Louisville, Kentucky. And I have been giving us a series of lessons or messages during this time that we have not been able to meet in person or gather together in churches. And so I wanted to deliver a short message today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for another day that you have made. We will rejoice. We are glad about it. Lord God, we ask that you be in the midst right now, Lord, for those who are mourning or grieving. Lord, we just ask you that you give us the joy of our salvation, Lord God, that you let us never lose our joy. Lord, we just pray for peace today, Lord. Don't ever let us lose the peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ. Jesus, Lord, and we thank you for your precious promises, Lord. We just lift up the entire community. We lift up the world today, Lord, for those who are suffering and have many concerns today, Lord. We know that your Holy Spirit permeates the atmosphere, that your word is true, and that you have sent out believers. You have put out leaders and parents and people who can give guidance and support and encouragement and comfort to one another, Lord God. So, Lord, don't let us fall short in what you expect from us as decent human beings as well as believers, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be made great in our lives, Lord. You will get the glory, honor, and the praise, Lord. Let our love be great. Let our celebrations continue, Lord, even if we must do them as social distancing or in somewhat isolation. Let us never cease to celebrate another day that you gave us, another day of life, our anniversaries, our birthdays, or just because we are your people. Lord, and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was thinking about something today. I, I almost didn't, I was almost not going to bring a message, but I was thinking about something that came to mind. And if I was going to give a title to it, uh, what came to mind was something uh, called I Must Go. And I was looking at Matthew 16. So let's read some of Matthew 16, beginning at verse 13. It says, Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by the flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth, I will be, it will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Jesus predicts his death, starting at verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This will never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus says to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, their spiritual life. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul, yet lose their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will, will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so I was looking at that when Jesus was already telling them that he must go to Jerusalem and what was going to happen to him there. 
And of course they are concerned. And Peter rebukes him and says, oh, that's never going to happen to you. Because it hurts him, the thought of someone that he loves that's going to have to leave them and then harm coming to them. But Jesus says, I must go. And so he has to be about his father's business as we learned many, many chapters ago. And throughout his life, he was about the will of the father. You know, it's not the only time Jesus has said, you know, you got to, if you want to be one of my followers, if you want to be one of my believers, if you want to be successful in this kingdom, in this spiritual kingdom, for things to work in our lives the way that they worked in Jesus' life because of God the Father and his promises, we too had to take up our cross and we we're going to have to follow him. We will have to follow that example. We will have to give up things and we will have to go. In John 12, he said something similar. In John 12, this is King James, I was reading NIV, uh, at verse 23, he says, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground, no, unless a seed fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause I came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. And then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And the people that stood by heard it and they said it thundered and others said an angel spake to him. And so he's saying that the that only reason they even heard that voice is for their own sake because he already knew God would be glorified if he went, if he did what it was that God had for him to do. So in, chap in Matthew chapter 20, Jesus again says to them at verse 17, now it says, now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. So we looked at chapter 16 and he said, I must go, I'm going. And in chapter uh, 20, Jesus goes on to say, it says, on the way he took the 12 aside and said to them, we are going up to Jerusalem and the son of man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death. And will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And on the third day, he will be raised to life. And so we know those things did happen. But he said, I must go. He said, we are going. And by the time we get to Palm Sunday, which today, the day that I'm making, I'm uh, videoing this message is Palm Sunday. And for, in chapter 21 in Matthew, he gets the coat. He has them to go get a coat. He says, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there, and if anyone asks you about it, tell them that, that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. And that was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. And the disciples went and did what he said, and they brought it back, and they placed their cloaks on Jesus for him to sit on and then a large crowd came and they spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches you know the palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road and the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted hosanna to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest heaven and when jesus entered jerusalem the whole city was stirred and asked who is this and the crowds answered this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so the point of the whole thing is that he went. He even was specific in what would happen to him if he went. But Jesus went. He fulfilled the purpose for which he even came here was to go to the cross for our sins. And to be mocked and to be scorned and to be ridiculed. So he knew that on that journey, a lot of things would happen that would be unpleasant. But at the end of the day, he would be glorified. He would be vindicated. God would make it all right in the end. And so the message for today is to go. That sometimes that you or I might be called to go somewhere. Go to law school. Go to medical school. Go to high school. Finish the purpose for which you are here. The, the, the part of the journey that leads to your destination. The goal in your destiny. Go. Sometimes you have to move. Sometimes you have to change jobs. Sometimes you have to wait. 
but go, just like Jesus told the disciples. And sometimes people will rebuke you, and you will have to say, I'm still going. As a matter of fact, sometimes you will have to say, we are going. I had a son that went to Cincinnati yesterday. I was raised that you don't go to any town where you don't have family. But my son said, we must go. This is in our best interest. We feel as though this is what God would have for us to do at this time in our lives is going to lead to greater for us. And we plan to come back. And remember, that's what Jesus told the disciples. I will be back. And we know for a fact, he came back. He rose on that third day. He fulfilled every promise that he made. And throughout that whole journey, even after he had made that journey back to Jerusalem, and even though he knew what the future was going to hold, because we see that the same people that were yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, and giving him praise on one day, were saying, crucify him, crucify him on another day. And this just goes to show us that sometimes when we go, people may even clap for us to go, oh my goodness, my friend or my family member has gone on to do great things. And at that moment when you're in medical school or you're in high school or you're getting that job or you're getting that home or doing those things, you know, being a better person, getting out of prison, you know, whatever thing that is, you have heard in your spirit say, you get up and you do what you have to do to fulfill your destiny and go mentally, physically, go spiritually, go. And people at first may say, wow, look how great that is. But, you know, sometimes people will get jealous or people will change. So you and I, we must have it in our own hearts that we are going. We want to see greater. We want to do the will of the one who sent us. It was Father God just the same way it was with Jesus. We want to see what the end's going to be. We are not letting coronavirus, any virus, any sickness, anything, any disappointment stop us from fulfilling our destiny. So in this season, you know, I did a, a message earlier, so please like our page, follow our pages. Uh, Minister Detina, uh, Pastor Detina, and Solid Foundation Church of God pages if you want to see our previous messages and our future messages. But we've been talking about seeds. We've been talking about the fact that even though we may right now feel like we're in a waiting period, we still can plant. We, you hear that clock still ticking in the background. And then time is still passing. Your destiny hasn't changed. The plan of God has not changed. The commands of God have not changed. For us to rise up and mature and to fulfill our destiny and to find joy, love, and peace in that destiny to find unity in that destiny but even if we don't find the support that we need and i pray god that we do we still go and we do the will of the one who sent us and he will be our vindicator he will be the one who blesses us he will be the one who proves that we have done the right thing and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and so find joy today have peace today but plan today Pray today, listen for the answers, and meet your destiny today. Hosanna to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men that we have been unified and reconciled to God, and now he speaks to us by his Holy Spirit. And if you don't have that Holy Spirit today, you welcome God and you believe on Jesus. You welcome Jesus into your life and your Holy Spirit into you, into you, and that you say that I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he did die on the cross for my sins, that he was raised on the third day, and that he is seated on the right hand of the Father, and that he is going to return for me. And so, God, I welcome you into my life. I believe you. I know I need a Savior. And the promises of God will come into your life, and the unity of the fellowship of the Christian body will come to meet your needs of encouragement and comfort um, as God commands for the people of God. So congratulations to you if this is the day that you have made that commitment to God. Now go. Go and complete your destiny. And we feel joy for you today. Let's celebrate one another as we fulfill the calling of God on our lives. This is Minister Detina Hurd from Solid Foundation Church of God. You go and have a great day and have a blessed holy week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.